today I figured I'd give you guys a list of the top 10 sequels better than the original. This is a my first top 10 list on this channel. And I figured it'd be fun to do sequels better than the original because a lot of people kind of badmouth sequels saying they're not as good as the originals. But I think there are a lot of films that do surpass the first in the franchise. So, without further ado, I'm going to give you guys my list of the top 10 sequels better than the original. And there might be some surprises on here. You won't see certain films such as T2 or Aliens because as awesome as those films are, I prefer the originals to those. But without further ado, I figured let's get started. Coming in at number 10 is 2010's Tron Legacy. The sequel to 19, I believe, 82's Tron. This film was a continuation and showed um, Flynn's son from the first movie going to try to find him in the digital world. This is a really awesome sequel to the original it stars Jeff Bridges again, like the original, and has a story of him trying to create a new world at, in this virtual digital space, and the threats from that space trying to invade our world. It's a very interesting sequel, and one that I highly enjoy, and one that surpasses the original. Coming in at number 9 is 2014's Captain America The Winter Soldier. This is actually my favorite MCU film. It's the most grounded, the one with the least amount of humor. Not that humor is bad, but I feel a lot of the MCU movies are more comedy than they are serious. And it's got kind of it's gotten to be more of a problem in more recent years, especially with shows like She-Hulk, which are just kind of straight comedies and movies such as Guardians 2 and you know, it's just all fun and funny funny stuff and I just uh it's just it, it grates on my nerves. But this film is an exception to that. This film is a continuation and sequel to Captain America the First Avenger. And I think it's actually really damn cool. It has Captain America going up against his former friend turned villain, the Winter Soldier. And it has Captain America trying to save the world from a corrupt government that's been taken over by Hydra. An awesome sequel through and through and one that I highly recommend. Coming in at number 8 is 1987's Death Wish 4, The Crackdown. This film is my favorite of the series and has Paul Kersey returning to the role of vigilante, but this time he's also like an assassin. This is a great continuation of the series and one that I absolutely love. And for anyone out there who wants a badass vigilante assassin type movie... You can't go wrong with Death Wish 4. Coming in at number 7 is 2015's Mad Max Fury Road. Fury Road is the best film in the Mad Max franchise. I absolutely love Mad Max 1, 2, and 3, but I think 4 is still the best. The only really gripe I have with this movie is Max is not played by Mel Gibson, but that is the only gripe that I really have. All in all, it's a very enjoyable film. With lots of great action, great direction by George Miller. Just truly a badass continuation of the franchise. And one that I highly recommend. Coming in at number 6 is 2021's Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, out of the original Spider-Man trilogy, the original is my favorite. So Spider-Man 2 would not make this list. Although Spider-Man 2 is a better film than No Way Home. But, given the fact that the new Home Trilogy, as I call it, is a whole new series, I figured why not throw in my favorite of that trilogy with the third film, Spider-Man No Way Home. One of the rare instances where the third film is the best film of a series, No Way Home shows Spider-Man teaming up with Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, as well as Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, in an attempt to save the world from the collapsing multiverse, and send the villains back to their homes. A very fun and enjoyable film, and one that is very entertaining, and is probably my second favorite MCU film behind The Winter Soldier, but I had to put it higher on the list because I do find it to be more entertaining than The Winter Soldier. So there's that. Coming in at, what have we got now? 
Uh, number five is Friday the 13th, part four, the final chapter. And despite the name, this was far from the final chapter. I love part four and think it is a badass game. But without a doubt, <laughs> I'm sorry, movie. I think it's a badass movie, but without a doubt, it is not the last Friday the 13th film. And this is a very misleading title. I very much do enjoy this film. I think it's the perfect embodiment of everything that is Friday the 13th. And I also love part six as well and enjoy that over the original. But I had to choose one, so I figured choose the final chapter. It is the best film of this franchise. And I've always loved the Jason movies. Friday the 13th is probably my favorite horror franchise out of them all. And part four is the best of the entire series. If you love horror, check it out. Coming in at number four is 2022's Top Gun Maverick. Now, I actually don't own the Blu-ray yet. Unfortunately, it's not coming out until November. But in the meantime, I figured I could just hold up my VHS copy of the original and we can just pretend this is the second movie. I love the first Top Gun. It's cheesy 80s action fun starring Val Kilmer, Tom Cruise, you know, um, it also has uh, Tom Skerritt in it, you know, a full-blown cast, Kelly McGillis, and I do love the original, but it's kind of cheesy 80s fun. It's also pretty dated, not just in its themes and its, you know, messaging, but it's pretty dated in the way it's filmed, the way it's directed, the way it's acted. It's kind of a cheesy 80s, 80s action extravaganza. But the new film actually has more heart than the original, better acting than the original, better action than the original, and a better story than the original. I was super freaking surprised with Top Gun Maverick. If you told me that 36 years after the original Top Gun, we'd have a sequel, and not only would we have a sequel, it would have Tom Cruise in it, and not only would it have Tom Cruise in it, it would be better than the first, I would have laughed in your face. But... Here we are, and Top Gun Maverick is probably my favorite movie of the year so far. So if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It is available to rent digitally, and the Blu-ray will be available this November. Coming in at number three is my favorite X-Men film, 2014's X-Men Days of Future Past. This is a badass film through and through, and it has... A story of Logan being sent back to the 1970s to stop the inevitable destruction of the world at the hands of this man named Trask who invents these robots known as Sentinels who will destroy mankind. It is an awesome and badass X-Men movie. And what I love about it is it takes the original cast from the first three films and then it takes the young cast from the newer films and combines them both together in a future and past story. It's an amazing film through and through. The stakes have never been higher in an X-Men movie. The characters have never been more interesting. And the story has never been better. I love this film. It's probably the, one of the most emotional Marvel movies ever. And this film blows away anything ever brought. Anything that's ever come out of the MCU. I love this movie, and at some point I probably will rank the X-Men franchise, but for now, this one is my favorite. Coming in at number two, is 2006's Superman 2, the Richard Donner cut. Not to be confused with the theatrical cut of Superman 2, which I also do like, but the Richard Donner cut is a continuation of the original story. It shows Superman going up against three other Kryptonians who are hell-bent on destroying the world in the name of revenge. I love Superman 2, the Richard Donner cut, and if you love Superman, I highly recommend this version to you all. And coming in at number one, and no surprises here, 1966's Clint Eastwood starring The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. I recently talked about this film in my ranking of the series, so I won't get too into it again, but this is a great film through and through, the third film of the Dollars Trilogy, and the best of the Dollars Trilogy. You cannot go wrong with this movie. 
Well, that's my list. Sorry that it's probably long-winded. I'm actually getting over a cold, so I might sound a little stuffy. But I did enjoy um, this idea for a list, and I think I might even do like a top ten, more top tens in the future. Um, I hope you all enjoyed watching. If you have a list of top ten sequels better than the original, leave them down below, and I'll read them. Thanks for watching, and peace out.